Hi, I'm Peter J. Ray. Welcome to Adventures in History. Today's topic is the 1919 Cleveland Tigers Ohio League football season. Cleveland had no professional team in 1917 or 1918, but they were back in the Ohio League, the last year of the, the Ohio League, before it transitioned into the into the National Football League, or NFL. So this was Ohio League football, and again, uh, Cl- the Cleveland team, the Cleveland Tigers now, were playing at League Park. They finished in fourth place with a record of 5-2-2. Two, and two. The first place team was the Canton Bulldogs, who were 9-0-1, Second place, the Rock Island Independents, 9-1-1. One, one. Third place, the Massillon Tigers, 6-3-1. Fourth place, the Cleveland Tigers, 5-2-1. Fifth place, the Dayton Triangles, 5-2-1. Sixth place, the Fort Wayne War Vets, 5-1-1. One, one. Seventh place, the Akron Indians, 5-5. Five, five. Eighth place, the Pitcairn Quakers, 5-4. Ninth place, the Toledo Maroons, 4 2 and 2. Tenth place, the Hammond All Stars, 4 3 and 3. Eleventh place, the Columbus Panhandles, 3 6 and 1. Twelfth place, Pine Village AC, 2 2 and 2. Thirteenth place, the Cincinnati Celts, 0 5 and 2. And fourteenth and last place, the Detroit Heralds, 1 4 and 2. So the schedule on October 12th, the first game for Cleveland, they played the Massillon Tigers and lost 3 to nothing in Massillon, Ohio. The next game was October 19th at home. They won 6 to nothing, nothing against Hammond in front of 3,500 fans. October 26th, also at home, they won, Cleveland won 13 to nothing against the Pitcairn All-Stars before 3,500 fans at League Park. November 2nd was a tie, no score against the Ammon, Hammond All-Stars in Chicago, 6,000 fans. November 9th was a win against the Toledo Maroons, 6 to nothing at League Park in Cleveland, 4,974 fans. November 11th uh, was at home, only two days later, against the Maslin Tigers. They won that game 3 to nothing at League Park, 8,000 fans. November 16th. At home against the Columbus Panhandles, Cleveland won 20-9 at League Park, 4,000 fans. November 23rd was at home against the Detroit Heralds, a 0-0 tie at League Park in Cleveland, attendance unknown. And the last game was November 27th at home against the Maslin Tigers, a 7-0 loss in front of 8,000 fans. As I said earlier, there was no professional football team in Cleveland 1917 and 1918. The U.S. had entered the First World War in 1917. Many pro football players were drafted and enlisted in the military service. The focus on the war reduced public interest in pro football. And the Canton Bulldogs were so strong that also reduced interest. The 1917 Canton Bulldogs had Jim Thorpe and Milt Gee had a record 17 touchdown passes broken by Benny Friedman 10 years later. Canton also had Pete Kallock, who was an American Indian, Jim Thorpe's best friend and the best college player. Many college players played pro f- football under different names. 1917, the Canton Bulldogs were champions. In 1918, the, the Dayton Triangles were champions. Uh, Canton and Maslin had no team. There were war restrictions on train travel and a, a flu pandemic. Uh, large gatherings were banned. The Dayton Triangles had a star runner, Earl Greasy Neal. Neal was an outfielder for the 1919 Cincinnati Reds, who won the World Series uh, against the Chicago Black Stockings, who threw the the World Series. The Ohio League was pro football's best uh, pro football league in the U.S. at that time. College football was much more popular than pro football. Good college football teams would draw 10,000 fans a game. Good pro football teams might draw 10,000 fans in a season. In the summer of 1919, the news came that Jim Thorpe, was, uh, who was, had been playing Major League Baseball for the Boston Braves, would return to the Canton Bulldogs for the 1919 season. Early in September, Jimmy O'Donnell, the manage, a manager for the Cleveland semi-pro baseball team, visited Canton, Ohio, announced 
himself as the business manager of the new Cleveland pro football team and said he had a contract to use League Park. The First World War was over. The fall of 1919, entrepreneurs and sportsmen looked for the rejuvenation of pro football. Jim Thorpe returned to the Canton Bulldogs and was offered part ownership of the team. In 1919, George Gipp, a halfback for Notre Dame, also played pro football under an assumed name. He became famous with the expression, win one for the Gipper, the speech by Newt Rockney. Pop Warner at the University of Pittsburgh football coach wanted to abolish pro football. It was common for college football players to play on Saturday in college and Sunday in the pros under assumed names. November 16th, Canton, Ohio against Maslin, Ohio. Jim Thorpe scored a touchdown, kicked two extra points, and had a 63-yard punt. He threw a touchdown pass to Joe Guyon, and Canton won 23 to nothing. George Hallis played pro football in 1919. He became famous as the founder of the Chicago Bears. November 30th, Canton, Maslin. Canton won 3 to nothing. Jim Thorpe had a 95-yard punt. 1919 was the first year black play- Black, there were black star players on a major team. Sh- Charlie Follis for the Sh- Shelby Blues in 1904 was the first black player. But in 1919, Fritz Pollard was the first black star on a good team. The Canton Bulldogs against Akron Indians game. Uh, Jim Thorpe uh, versus Fritz Pollard. 1919, Curly Lambeau, the former halfback at Notre, da- Notre Dame, formed a semi-pro Green Bay Packers. And the Green Bay uh, was sponsored, the team was sponsored by the Indian Packing Company. Now, for the, for the Cleveland Tigers in 1919, Ed Green was the head coach. Now, the players, uh, Ray Allshaus was an end. Allshaus was 210 pounds, 26 years old. He went to college at Pittsburgh, played in eight games. He was born in 1893 in Indiana County, Pennsylvania, and died in 1970, Duquesne, Pennsylvania, at age 76. In high school, he went to Tarentum in Pennsylvania, and he also served in the U.S. Army. Ray Allshaus. Vance Allshaus was a guard. Vance Allshaus was 5'10", 190 pounds, age 25. Went to college at Pittsburgh, played in seven games for Cleveland. He was born in 1893 in Armagh, Pennsylvania, and died in 1981 at age 86. And his brother was Ray Allshaus. Vance Allshaus. George Brickley was a halfback. He was 5'10", 195, 190 pounds, age 25. Went to college at Trinity, Connecticut. Played in five games, born in 1894. Died in 1947 in Everett, Massachusetts at age 52. He played pro football from 1919 to 1921 with the Hammond All-Stars, Cleveland Tigers, and New York Giants. Had two years in the NFL. He had a touchdown for the Cleveland Tigers in 1920 in the NFL. He was a pro athlete for baseball and football, and MLB was an outfielder for the Philadelphia Athletics in 1913, batted 167, five games, two hits. He became the athletic director and head football coach at Everett High School from 1922 to 1925, and he was the head football coach at Woburn High School. His brother, Charles Brickley, was a football player and coached for the New York Giants in 1921. And his grandson, Andy Brickley, was an NHL player for the Boston Bruins and is a current TV analyst, George Brickley. Player named N. Brown was an N, played in one game. He has, he is, has died. Jack Connell was a halfback, 23 years old, went to college at Dartmouth, played in one game. Connell was born in 1896 in Everett, Massachusetts, died in 1965 in Kittery Point, Maine, at age 68. He had military service in the U.S. Navy. He was the head football coach at Dartmouth College from 1921 to 1922 and from 1929 to 1933. He had a record of 39-19-4. He was a high school quarterback, as high school quarterback at Everett High School. His team went 13-0 and outscored opponents 600 to nothing. Jack Connell. Henry Carlson was an end, 5'9", 166 pounds, 25 years old, went to college at Pittsburgh, played in seven games. He was born in 1894 in Murray City, Ohio. Died in 1964 in Ligonier, Pennsylvania at age 70. He played high school ball for Belfont Academy in Belfont, Pennsylvania. Henry Carlson, player named Cartwright, was a halfback, played in one game. Played for the Akron Pros in 1917 and the 
1919 for the Cleveland Tigers, and he is deceased. Cartwright. Les Clark was a halfback, 160 pounds, age 26, went to college at Brown, played in one game. Born in 1893, died in 1948 at age 54. He was from Detroit, born in Detroit and died in Detroit. He went to high school for Central High School in Detroit. Les Clark. Leo Cody was a fullback halfback. He went to college at Georgetown in Washington, D.C., played in two games. He went to high school at Wooster Academy in Wooster, Massachusetts, and he is deceased. Leo Cody. Dinger Doan was a fullback halfback, five foot, five foot ten inches, 190 pounds. He was 26 years old. He went to Tufts College. Played in six games. Born in 1893 in Natick, Massachusetts. Died in 1948 in Somerville, Massachusetts at age 54. He played pro football from 1919 to 1927 for the Cleveland Tigers, New York Giants, Milwaukee Badgers, Detroit Panthers, Pottsville Maroons, and Providence Steamrollers. Had eight years in the NFL. He scored 15 touchdowns, 14 rushing, and one off a fumble. Dinger Doan. Jim Drummy was a quarterback. He it was 170 pounds, 23 years old, went to college at Boston and Tufts. Played in seven games. He was born in 1896 in Revere, Massachusetts, and is deceased. Jim Drummy, player named Gaffney, was an end and played in one game. Ralph Gordon was a halfback quarterback, 170 pounds, went to college at Brown, played in eight games, and he is deceased. Ralph Gordon. Sam Graham was a tackle. He went to college at Washington and Lee and played in one game. Sam Graham. John Haggerty was a guard, 205 pounds, 24 years old, went to college, uh, played, went to college at Tufts, played in five games. John Haggerty was born in 1895 and died in 1974 at age 81. Served in the U.S. Navy. Played pro football from 1919 to 1921 for the Cleveland Tigers and Canton Bulldogs and New York Giants. He had two years in the NFL. John Haggerty. Swede Henderson was an end. He went to college at Northwestern, played in one game. He also played in 1917 for the Hammond Clabbies. Swede Henderson. Mox Hicks was an end, 175 pounds, college at Indiana, Pennsylvania. Played in one game. He was born in 1892 in Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania, home of Joe Namath. Died in 1944 in Sawtell, California at age 50. Went to high school at Beaver Falls. He was in the U.S. Army. Played pro football from 1919 to 1921 for the Cleveland Tigers and Hammond Pros. Two years in the NFL. Mox Hicks. George Kane was a tackle center, 5'9", 195 pounds. 28 years old, went to college at Fordham, played in three games, born in 1891 in Rochester, New York. Died in 1969 in Pinellas County, Florida at age 78. Played pro football in 1919 to 1921 for the Cleveland Tigers and New York Giants, one year in the NFL. George Kane. George Doc Kerr was a tackle, 6'1", 211 pounds, age 25, went to college at Bates Catholic and George Washington. Played in one game, born in 1894 in Medford, Massachusetts, and died in 1980 in Melrose, Massachusetts at age 86. <coughs> Played pro football from 1919 to 1926 for the Cleveland Tigers, New York Giants, and Newark Demons. Three years in the NFL. George Kerr. Jim Kessner was a quarterback, 26 years old, went to college at Carnegie Mellon, played in one game. He was born in 1893 in in Stewart's and Furnace, Pennsylvania, and died in 1976 in Fullerton, California, at age 82. Jim Kessner. Bulger Lowe was an N, 5'11", 180 pounds, 24 years old, went to college at Lafayette and Fordham, played in one game. He was born in 1895 in Arlington, Massachusetts, and died in 1939 in Boston, Massachusetts, at age 43. Went to high school at Phillips Exeter Academy in Exeter, New Hampshire. He was in the U.S. Army, played pro football from 1919 to 1927 for the Akron Indians, Cleveland Tigers, and Canton Bulldogs. Also the Providence Steamroller, Frankfurt Yellow Jackets, and Boston Bulldogs. Six years in the NFL. He, he, got, he, received, he received an award in 1921 from the Buffalo Evening News, all APFA, or NFL. In the U.S. Army, in World War I, he was wounded in a hospital in France. The Greater Gridiron Club of Greater Boston established the George Bulger Lowe Award in 1939 to recognize 
New, New England's best offensive and defensive players in the NCAA Bowl and Championship divisions. The third old, oldest college football award, and it's called New England's Heisman Trophy, Bulger Lowe. Ward Lyons was a guard. He was 210 pounds, 27 years old, went to college at Carnegie Mellon, played in one game. Born in 1892 in Elyria, Ohio, and has passed away. Ward Lyons. Joe Mattern was a fullback, halfback, 155 pounds, 27 years old, went to college at Minnesota and Lehigh, played in four games, born in 1892 in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and died in 1961 at age 68. He played pro football from 1916 to 1922 for the Maslin Tigers, Cleveland Tigers, and Minneapolis Marines, two years in the NFL. Joe Mattern. Mark Miles was a tackle, 6'2", 255 pounds, 31 years old. He went to college at Washington and Lee, played in five games, born in 1888 in New York, New York, and died in 1954 in Randall Township, New Jersey, at age 65. He went to high school at Erasmus Hall in Brooklyn, New York. He also played for the 1920 Akron Pros, one year in the NFL. Mark Miles. Cy Paukstis was a fullback end, 6'0", 175 pounds, 34 years old. He went to college at Pennsylvania, played in two games. He was born in 1885 in Pittston, Pennsylvania, and died in 1961 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania at age 75. He was also a pro baseball player. He, he, he was a college football coach. He was at the, in the Electoral College for the 19th, he was in the Electoral College for the 1916 presidential election from Pennsylvania. College pay- baseball, he was a catcher. He went to the University of Pennsylvania and studied law. He was an All-American football player. College, he was a college football coach at Dickinson from 1911 to 1912, and now known as Widner University. And he, he, went, and, and he also coached the Pennsylvania military. Uh, from 1916 to 1929 and 1939 to 1946. He was a pro baseball player in 1909 for the Cincinnati Reds, hit 125 in four games. He was a friend of Pop Warner, coach of the Carlisle Indian School, Cy Puxtis. Red Perlman was a tackle, six foot flat, 195 pounds, 21 years old, went to college at Pittsburgh, played in eight games, born in 1898 in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and died in 1985 in Hollywood, Florida at age 87. Went to high school at Fifth Avenue in Pittsburgh, played pro football from 1919 to 1924 with the Cleveland Tigers, Rochester Jeffersons, three years in the NFL. For the 1917 Pittsburgh Panthers in college, he was undefeated, and his coach was Pop Warner. After he retired as a football player, he became a dentist. Red Perlman. Al Pierotti was a center, 5'10", 199 pounds, college at Washington and Lee. He played nine games. He was born in 1895 in Boston, Massachusetts, and died in 1964 in Revere, Massachusetts at age 68. Went to high school at for Everett, Massachusetts. He played pro football from 1919 to 1929 for the Cleveland Tigers, Akron Pros, New York Giants, Milwaukee Badgers, Racine Legion, Boston Bulldogs, Providence Steamroll. Eight years in the NFL. He played in 48 NFL games, scored two points in the NFL, won an NFL championship in 1920 for the Akron Pros, the first NFL season. 1926 for the Boston Bulldogs, an AFL team. AFL was a rival league to the NFL, created by Red Grange and his agent, C.C. Pyle. Al Pierotti played pro baseball in the minors for the Providence Grays, and an MLB in 1920-1921 for the Boston Braves. It's a pitcher he is 1-2 and two with three, 13 strikeouts and an ERA of 4.05. 1931, he was a pro wrestler and had a match against Jim Le- Landis, the World Heavyweight Championship at Coney Island Velodrome, and lost. By 1932, he was a pro wrestling referee. 1935, he was assistant football coach at Chelsea High School. 1936, he was the head coach of the baseball team. He started and continued from 1936 to 1938 the sports talk radio WMEX. At Chelsea High School, he was a teacher and coach till his death till 1964. Al Pierotti. Norman Shule was a quarterback halfback. He was 25 years old, college at Western Reserve in Cleveland, played in two games. He was born in 1894 in Cleveland, Ohio, and died in 1972 at age 78, and he served in the U.S. Army. Norman Shule. 
Johnny Scott was a full back end. He was 5'10", 176 pounds, 24 years old, went to college at Lafayette, played in two games. He was born in 1895 at Pennsylvania, died in 1961 in Reno, Nevada at age 66. In high school, he went to Phillips Exeter Academy in Exeter, New Hampshire. He was in the U.S. Army Marine Corps. Played pro football from 1919 to 1926 for the Cleveland Tigers, Akron Indians, Buffalo All-Americans, and Philadelphia Quakers and played in 20 games. He scored 30 points, two rushing touchdowns, four passing touchdowns, and one interception for a touchdown. Johnny Scott. Fred Seidel was a tackle, 5'11", 235 pounds. He went to college at Pittsburgh, played in two games. He was born in 1895 in Berwick, Pennsylvania, and died in 1959 in Hazleton, Pennsylvania at age 63. Went to high school at Belfont Academy in Belfont, Pennsylvania. He served in the U.S. Army. And in 1919, he also played for the Canton Bulldogs, Fred Seidel. Lauren Solon was back, one the only guy from the 1916 Cleveland Indians team in the Ohio League. Lauren Solon. Ed Stahl was a guard, 5'11", 185 pounds, age 28, college at, went to college at Pittsburgh. He played in eight games. He was born in 1891 in Clemo, Pennsylvania, and died in 1966 at, in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania at age 75. He went to high school at Greensburg in Greensburg, Pennsylvania, and Belfont Academy in Belfont, Pennsylvania. He played for the Cleveland Tigers in 1920-1921, two years in the NFL. Ed Stahl. Fred Sweetland was a halfback fullback, 5'10", 175 pounds, college at Washington at Lee and Fordham. He played nine games. Sweetland was born in 1893 in Everett, Massachusetts, and died in 1958 in Everett at age 64. He played for the Brickley, he played for Brickley and the 1920 Akron Pros, the 1921 New York Giants, two years in the NFL, and he had one ru- touchdown in the NFL. Fred Sweetland. Alex Telfer was an end, 180 pounds, 26 years old, at college at Dartmouth. He played in two games. He was born in 1893 and is deceased. He went to high school at DeWitt Clinton in Bronx, New York. And uh, he also played in 1919 for the Canton Bulldogs. Alex Telfer. Vern Thomas was a tackle. He is deceased. Ray Trobid, Trowbridge was an end, 170 pounds, 23 years old, college at Boston College, and also Purdue and Tafts. He played in two games. He was born in 1896 in Hingham, Massachusetts. Died in 1962 at age 66. In high school, he, was in, he played in Everett, Massachusetts. He was also served in the U.S. Coast Guard. In 1920, he played for the Cleveland Tigers. 1921 for the New York Brickley Giants, two years in the NFL. Ray Trowbridge. Gus Ziegler was a guard tackle, 40, 44 years old. He played college at Pennsylvania, played in three games. He was born in 1875 in Royersford, Pennsylvania, died in 1960 in Delaware County, Pennsylvania at age 64. He played in 1990 for the Akron Indians as well, and also the Maslin Tigers, all three teams. He was a high school and and college football coach from 1908 to 1930 for Mercersburg Academy, Phillips Exeter Academy, Penn, WVA, California, and Delaware. He was a college football player, U- University of Pennsylvania, two-time All-American guard, 1907 for the Penn Quakers. He led the team to a, as a player to their fifth national title, Gus Ziegler. 1919, as we said, the Canton Bulldogs were the champions with a record of 9-0-1. Most teams in the Ohio League in 1919 lost money. Lots of players jumped teams during the season. There was a report that Newt Rockney played for five different teams. College players often played pro under assumed names. There was a need for an official league for salary limits to enforce contracts and to have no college players allowed. The NFL was coming the next season. Pete Kalak, Jim Thorpe, Jim Thorpe's teammate for the Carlisle Indians and the Canton Bulldogs said, quote, pro football in the day, days of Jim Thorpe wasn't as clean as it is now, and it was a lot dirtier then, the co- dirtier than the college games of that time. Jim was equally as good in college and the pros, but the dirtier the football got, the meaner Jim got. The pro, the pro would gouge your eyes, knee you on every play, and just outright slug you time and again. 
With Jim, they would just pile on, but he wore longer cleats, and when they got on him on his got him on his back, he would double up and start kicking his way out of the pile. So that's the story of the 1919 Cleveland Tigers who played in the Ohio League. And the next year would be the beginning of the NFL, and Cleveland Tigers would be in that, that new league, which, of course, is continuing up till now. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. God bless you. Take care, and I'll see you next time.